breathwork workshop and a meditation workshop. They will be happening in all three studios. So if you happen to be across the river or up in Harrisburg for the weekend, for whatever reason that you would be there, you can still get your workshops and have access to that information. So if you're interested, let me know after class. I can help point you in the direction to where all that information lives. Let's get started. Child's pose. So chest to the floor, knees super wide, toes come to touch. Allow everything that's touching the floor to get really heavy here. So the tops of your feet press down, the palms of your hands and each knuckle presses down. And then on your next exhale, allow your chest to really sink down to the floor. I know for me in this pose, my nose kind of gets in the way of doing that. So if you need to take your head one side and then the other, rock it back and forth, see what's available for you. But that extra little stretch of the thoracic spine kind of dropping forward really feels good here, especially first thing in the morning. Take your fingertips right here and press your hips even further back toward the back of your mat. And start to build your breath. On the inhale, we fill up completely, so complete that there's a pause at the top. And on the exhale, empty out completely, so completely that there's a pause at the bottom. Start to add in that little bit of constriction in the back of your throat, the one that makes your breath sound like the ocean waves. And then tune into that breath. You hear what you're creating. Maybe you start to hear what the yogis around you are creating and then add your breath to theirs. I'm passing around some assisting cards for those of us in studio. You feel free at any point during the practice to flip those over to a yes or a no, depending on whether or not you are into hands-on assist at that time. One more big breath here. Fill the back and the side of your lungs. And on your exhale, take your first downward facing dog. Create your body here in a way that allows you to embody your body. Really get into it. This is the first time you've kind of stretched out this morning or done any sort of movement. Yeah, everything that gets out the creaks and the cracks right here. Bend one knee and then the other. Drop your hips side to side. And then add your breath to your movement. On your inhale, lift your heels all the way to the ceiling. Exhale, lower them down to the floor. Inhale, lift to the ceiling. Exhale, bend your knees and hover a little bit above the floor. Yeah, now take your hips all the way back again on your inhale. One more here. Fill up. Empty out. Move feet to hands. Halfway lift to create a long, flat spine. Place your hands on your thighs and press in. So you're pressing the crown of your head forward and your hips straight back toward the back of your mat. One more breath here. Ragdoll, pull the pit of your belly all the way in and up. Big C-shaped curve in your spine. Let your head drop, let your shoulders drop. Take a sway here side to side if that feels right. And get into the muscles of your feet here right away. Lift and spread your toes, wiggle them around. Feel all those little muscles articulating into the floor. Press your big toe mounds down and press the center of each heel down. Now turn your inner ankles back just a little bit. Yeah, so they don't even necessarily have to move, just that energetic turning in of the toes and out of the ankles. You may feel a lift all the way up the inseam of both of your legs. On your next inhale, roll on up, extended mountain, reach for the ceiling. 
yeah, like it's the first big stretch you've taken today. Maybe it is. Reach up, maybe go back. Hands at heart center. We'll start our practice with the vibration of three ohms. Press your thumbs into your chest so you can experience the vibration. And breathe with me. Big breath in. Ah, oh. Ah, oh. Ah, oh. Press down, extended mountain lift up and fold halfway lift fill your lungs and fold empty them out extended mountain fill up look up and fold empty halfway lift fill up and fold one more time here extended mountain reach up maybe reach back fold halfway lift chaturanga step or hop back upward facing dog pull your shoulders on your back downward facing dog breath in and out two more together last one fill up empty out feet to hands halfway lift fold extended mountain Fold, halfway lift, chaturanga. Press the balls of your feet down into the floor as you lower, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, breath in and out. Two more, lift up on the inhale, exhale. Last one, fill, look forward, move forward, halfway lift. Fold, extended mountain, last one. Get as long as you can. Fold, halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breath in and empty. Fill up, empty out. Last one, fill and lift, empty move forward halfway lift fold chair pose stay low for this first one keep your breath moving in and out and get reacquainted with your feet here lift and spread your toes give them a little wiggle press your heels down now take that little turning out turning the inner arches back and notice what change that makes in your center line yeah, maybe a big change, maybe a big change. Just see what's so. Last breath here to get really long in your torso. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Warrior one, right side. Inhale as you rise. Feel for the pause. Chaturanga. You flow to the other side with your breath. Up dog down dog left side inhale reach all the way through your fingertips chaturanga upward facing downward facing dog three breaths lift up press your chest back towards your knees one more like that fill empty move forward halfway lift fold chair pose one breath this time fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog right side warrior one inhale to rise chest to the ceiling chaturanga upward facing downward facing left side step and reach press down in your big toe mounds chaturanga 
up dog, downward facing dog. Three breaths. Yeah, keep building that in volume. Not only the volume that you can hear, but the volume of breath that's moving. One more. Exhale, feet to hands, halfway lift. Fold, chair pose. Look up between your fingers. Fold, halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, drink it all in. Downward facing dog, let it go. Right side, warrior one, inhale, rise. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side, step it through, press down. Chaturanga. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Lion's breath out. <sighs> Lift your right leg up behind you. Press it so much toward the back of the room that everything from your glute all the way to your lifted heel becomes ignited. Yeah, now press your hands down evenly into the floor and lift two or three more inches. Nice. Bend your knee. Open your hip. Stay here or flip your dog. Nice. Now reach the center of your chest up toward the ceiling. Press your thoracic spine up to your chest. Let your gaze go past your fingertips. One more big breath. Both hands down, side plank, right side. Set yourself up here with a knee down or a leg lifted. This pose has like a million different degrees of intensity. You choose the one that's right for you this morning. If your heels are together here, separate them. Press down into your right hand for one more breath. Chaturanga, flow through. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breath in. Breath out. Lift your left leg up behind you. Again, here, pressing so much toward the back of the room that you could kick the wall down behind you. And press down through each fingertip and lift up three more inches. Nice. Bend your knee. Open your hip. Stay or flip. Feet on 12 o'clock here right away. So Paul and everyone, bring your toes just a bit closer together. Nice. Chest up. Drishti towards your fingertips. One more breath to reach even further. Both hands down, side plank, left arm down. Spread your fingers here on your left hand. Like get the webbing involved, stretching everything out. If your heels are together, see about separating them here just a little. One more big breath. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, full breath in, exhale it out. Step your right foot forward for crescent lunge. Now do yourself a favor in this pose and come down low right away. Our hips are the heaviest part of our body. So that's really where our center of gravity lies. The more we can bring that down toward the floor, the easier balance becomes. Reach all the way up through your fingertips. Gaze up through your fingertips. See if you can take your gaze back another light bar, maybe two or three. You can now allow that crescent shape to start creeping up in between your shoulder blades. Pull them straight back. One more breath. Hands to heart center, twist to your right. Keep pressing here through the heel of your back leg. Yeah, that's going to send the back of your thigh up toward the ceiling and keep all of that integrity on your left side. Press up. Yeah, now both hips are even. Two more breaths. Lengthen and twist. Lengthen out. Twist it out. Back to crescent lunge, warrior two. 
sink down low right away. Now you've got all this length you've started creating on both sides of your body. Get that same length in the front and back of your body by lifting the front of your pelvis up towards your sternum and sending your tailbone down toward the floor behind you. Very nice adjustments. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Stay low in your knee, reach back. On your next inhale, extend your leg, reach all the way back, extended side angle. Come down, back down to 90 degrees in your front knee. A yeah, great spot for the fingertips to come down to a block. Press down so much in your back foot that you feel like it's what's launching your pose forward. And I'll reach your fingertips all the way up over your ear. So this direction. Love it. One more breath to get really long. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Step your left foot forward, crescent lunge. Come down low right away. Set the feet up nice and wide. Nice. And then take up all the length front to back on your mat. Pull in and up from the pelvis to the crown and then start to create that little back bend. Take your gaze up. Maybe it comes back. Pull your shoulders straight back. One more breath here to lift. Hands to heart center, twist to the left. And you're kind of wringing your organs out here like a dish rag. So you know that when you have the rag, you can't really expect it if you leave it limp in the middle for anything to come out when you twist. You have to lengthen from one side to the other. Do the same with your spine here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. One more, lengthen out. Twist it out. Crescent lunge, warrior two. Let that back heel come down to the floor. Press down the outer edge of your back foot. Nice, now same thing right here. Lift the front of your pelvis up towards your belly button. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Stay low in your front knee. Yeah, now next inhale, extend your leg all the way, reach all the way, extended side angle. Pull the front ribs in towards center. Yeah, so it kind of creates your torso then as one big piece rather than something that's disconnected in the middle. So the energy can flow all the way from your back foot all the way to the crown of your head. Last breath here, chaturanga. Great work, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breath in, exhale it out. Move feet to hands. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, sit low. Get into your feet here, lift, spread, wiggle the toes. Press everything down so much so that you feel like you could stand back up. Now sit a bit lower. Hands come to heart center, twist to your right. Lengthen out on your inhale, twist it out on your exhale. Press your thoracic spine forward to your chest. One more breath in and lengthen. Back to chair, hands to heart center, twist to your left. You've got it, three breaths here. Lengthen and twist. Get long and twist. Press down, twist a little more, back to chair, and fold. Fingers to toes, forward fold. Take your peace fingers around your big toes. At least a little micro bend in your knees here so you can press down through your heels. Like really dig them into the floor 
So then we can take the muscles in the backs of our legs and send them up toward the ceiling. Very nice. Two more breaths. Release your toes. Inhale, come on back to chair. We'll move with the breath here this time. Let's get loud. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, let it go with a lion's breath. So you're going to stick your tongue out and just let's do that three times. Inhale, reach. Two more. Let it go. Loud enough that our friends at home can hear. Inhale, back to chair. And fold. Palms to toes, forward fold. Yeah, that one's a little bit of a thigh workout, too. Go ahead and place the backs of your hands on your mat and step onto your palms. Create that same feeling here in the forward fold of pressing your heels down the center of the heel into the mat so you can lift all the way up the back of your legs. Press up into my hand. Nice. Last big breath here. Release your feet. Crow pose. Crow goddess or any other inversion you might want to take this to. Pull into your center line here so the belly button moves straight back toward the spine. Press in with your knees and press out with your elbows. Nice, and wherever you're playing here, can you take it to the next step? Even if it's just a thought, I might want to go there with one foot off the ground, maybe the other comes up. If you've got both feet off the ground, can the toes come together? Last big breath, step or hop back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breath in, exhale it out. One more like that, fill. And empty. Feet to hands. Halfway lift and fold. Extended mountain. Press down, reach up. Eagle pose, right side. Right arm under, right leg over. Have your seat where you typically have it. Wherever your default lies and you say, this is my eagle pose, Sit a little bit lower than that. And now pull everything into center. Squeeze your thighs in together. Pull the front ribs back and into center. One more breath. And switch sides. Left arm under, left leg over. Get to where your typical eagle is, where you're nice and centered, and now sit lower. Yeah, that gives you a little bit more access to that pelvic tilt of lifting the front of the pelvis up and sending the tailbone down toward the mat. Stack your ribs right over where your hips are. And switch, eagle on the right side. One last time here. Get to where you were in that last eagle, and then add your breath. See what can be had by just having a larger inhale, and then a more powerful exhale. Expand your chest, pull navel to spine. One more breath, switch sides on your exhale. Eagle left side, sit down. And then let your breath enter the pose. You've got two more. Last one. And release. Standing leg raise right side. Grab for the near toe. I've been really liking to start just in the middle with my hand on the top of my thigh, pressing down, and then lifting the thigh up at the same time. Gets my hips exactly horizontal where they need to be. From there, open up to the right. Gaze maybe goes to the left. Flex your lifted foot. 
you know, see if you can bring that knee down towards hip height. So we've got a 90 degree angle. Very nice. Come all the way back to center airplane, send your foot straight back. Right here, dial all five of those toes down toward the mat and extend the whole leg. If you can get it to where there's no bend in the knee, go for it. Little bit of bend stays in your standing knee. Pull the pit of the belly to the spine, half moon. The more you press through that lifted leg, the lighter it gets. Let it float on up to the ceiling. One more breath, fill your lungs. Exhale, both feet to the mat, shake it out. And set up standing leg raise on the left side. You choose here, near toe. If you want what we had on the other side, press down into your knee and then lift up into your hand. Open up to the left, gaze moves to the right. Flex your lifted foot. Nice, and then bring your left knee back down towards the hips. Yeah, you got it, one more breath. Back to center, airplane. Toes dialed down to the mat to create flat hips. Now keep that alignment of your leg reaching straight out, half moon. Here in your half moon, place your drishti on one spot. Maybe it starts to move up towards your top hand. but take it there one spot at a time. Last breath here, lift both feet to the mat. Shake it out, come all the way up to an extended mountain at the top of your mat, reach up, look up, dancer pose right side. Take dancer or standing bow, your choice if there's a strap involved. Grab for the inside of your right ankle, send your foot all the way back. You know, once you feel like you're at your peak of stretch here, your foot's as far back as it's going to go, your chest is as far forward as it's going to go, dial your lifted knee down toward the mat. Yeah, so you're creating those flat hips like you just had an airplane. Last breath, feel what you feel, and switch sides. Little bend in your standing knee. And then we go for the length first, pressing all the way back and pulling the whole chest forward as far as it can go. Once you've got that, dial down that left knee. Very nice. Drishti on one spot, one more breath. Both feet to the mat. Tree pose, right side. And your foot can go anywhere here, anywhere from your ankle all the way to the top of your thigh, just avoiding the inside of the knee. Express your arms. Maybe that's a bind this morning. Maybe that's big and wide. Whatever makes you feel awake, alive, powerful, Take your gaze to the ceiling, and for the last two breaths, look up or maybe close your eyes. And then both feet to the mat. Very nice. Left side. Press your foot into your standing leg and your standing leg into your foot. Drishti set, then express your arms. 
Nice. Get to that place again where you feel really big, where you're taking up as much space as possible. Sometimes the yoga class is the only place in our lives that we allow ourselves to take up space. So take up as much as you can. Take your gaze to the ceiling, last two breaths, close the eyes. Yeah, let it wiggle, let it wobble. Both feet to the mat. Inhale, extended mountain at the top. And fold, let that all go. Halfway lift, fill your lungs, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, triangle pose. Take up a ton of space front to back. Yeah, and then lift everything, everything from your hips to your shoulders, pull it up to your ears. Nice, so right here, pretend like you're that piece of toaster in a toaster that doesn't wanna to touch the heating elements. So we're gonna pull our front ribs into center and send the tailbone back toward the back corner of your mat. Nice, so now all that length on the front and the back sides of the bodies, pull in your navel, keep that engaged. Stand all the way up, side facing, wide leg forward fold. And even here in this fold, yeah, it's a little restful. We're taking a slight break, unless you wanna go into an inversion or something else that you find challenging right here. But in this moment of just kind of chilling, noticing what we've done, and then getting ready to move forward, can you keep the core engaged? just as a foundation of the pose, no need to suck it in, just engaging the muscles. Press down into your heels, little tiny bend in your knees. On an inhale, rise all the way up. Namaste, front facing forward fold. Bind of your choosing behind your back. Once your feet are set, hinge forward. Anchor your feet down into the floor here. So you should feel that you can press down into the center of each heel. And then there's still a little tiny bend in both knees. Twist your triangle. Take the arm out to a T or maybe up to the ceiling. Notice here, if you're really kind of opening the thoracic spine, if your feet are still evenly placed into the floor. Yeah, then make any adjustments you need to, a slightly shorter stance if that's needed. Then take one more breath here, fill your lungs. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side triangle. Take up all the space. And then can you, using your mind's eye, your proprioception here, your felt sense, draw a line from your left hip all the way to your left armpit. See that that feels like a straight line. Very nice. Yeah, fingertips may need to come up a little bit higher on the block to make that happen. Give yourself the space to breathe. Side facing, wide leg forward fold, 10 toes to the right side of your mat. Take your fold. Again, little bend in the knees. If your knees are like mine and they automatically want to lock, lift your toes as a reminder to your knees to stay bent. Nice. Now let the head drop here. Let your shoulders round forward if you're not taking the bind. Let yourself have the moment of rest. 
not because you've earned it or you deserve it. You've done both of those things, but just because you inherently deserve to have it. Press into your feet, come on up to stand. Namaste, front facing forward fold. Bind or no bind, your choice. But either way, even if the fingers are coming down toward the mat, lift your shoulders up onto your back. So we want them to be headed straight up toward the ceiling. Squeeze them together, yes. Now keep your hips right where they are and twist your triangle. Right arm comes down, left arm to a T or toward the ceiling. Nice, keep pressing down in both feet. Unlock your knees. One more breath. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath here. Lion's breath out. Roll yourself out to a high plank. Now lower all the way down to the floor. Chest and hips touch at the same time. Locust pose number one as soon as you arrive. Thank you, Anne. Press down, rise up. Press the crown of your head past the front of your mat. Yeah, so here in the studio, I'm seeing the tops of everybody's head. That's perfect. One more breath. Lower down. Breath in. And out. Locust number two. Press down. Rise up. Pull your jawbone straight back towards your neck. So the back of your skull is in essence lifting up toward the ceiling. Yes, just like that, you got it. One more breath, lower down. Take a cheek to the mat, windshield wiper your feet. And we'll set up for floor bow. We've got two of them. So you choose if you're doing one foot at a time or both feet. Grab for the outsides or the insides of your ankles and press them back toward the back of your mat. Flex your feet. Now press the whole sole of your foot up toward the ceiling. One more breath, lower down. Take your feet side to side. Floor bow number two. Grab your ankles and an, on an inhale, rise. Squeeze your knees here into center. Now, if you've got just one leg, that is a little bit more difficult to do. But in essence, you're just sending your knee all the way back toward the back of your mat. Very nice. One more breath. Lower down to your mat on your exhale. Place your hands at your lowest ribs. Upward facing dog, breathe in, send your chest forward, downward facing dog. Big breath in, exhale it out, knees to the mat for camel. Shoulders over hips, hips over knees, hands in your imaginary back pockets. From here, send the center of your chest toward the ceiling. If your hands are traveling down towards your ankles, just notice here that stacking again of the hips over the knees. Bring your hips just a little bit forward if you feel that you're kind of really leaning back. On an inhale, rise up and out, sit back on your heels for high hero. Tuck the toes under to give them a little stretch. Yeah, I like that, untucking the little baby toe, get it involved. Now bring the feet all the way around, set up for your bridge pose. Set your feet up, hips width distance. Heels stacked right underneath of your knees. And we'll set up the feet here again. So lift and spread your toes, give them a little wiggle. 
Press your big toe mounds down in the center of each heel down. Press down, rise up, hips in the air for bridge number one. Everything that's touching the mat here, the back of your head, your shoulders, your feet, all pressing down into the floor. One more big breath and then lower down. Take the knees side to side if they need a little wiggle. And then bridge number two, press down, rise up. We'll hold this one a little longer. Option here, if you'd like to lift the right leg all the way to the ceiling, press through your foot, one breath here. Replace your right leg, lift the left one. Flex your foot at the top, press it up toward the ceiling. Replace both feet and lower down. Four more back bends you've got, bridge or wheel, you decide where you're going. Set your hands for wheel. Press down on an inhale, rise. Stay for five, four, three, two, one, lower down. Reset your feet on 12 o'clock. And then on your next inhale, rise. Press down, stay for five, four, three, two, one, lower down. Breathe in and out. Number three, feet on 12, press down, lift up. And create it so your feet are really stuck to the floor here. One more big breath. Lower down, here's your last one. Bridge your wheel, make it your biggest. Bigger breath, more space. Press down and rise. Nothing in your way here. You've got it for five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down, Supta Baddha Konasana, soles together, knees wide. Hand on your belly, hand on your heart. dead bug can rock side to side for happy baby here if that's what feels right now take your feet all the way to the ceiling flex them at the top lower your right leg down halfway on your next exhale switch now press through your feet I like to use the analogy like you're scraping mud off the bottom of your foot. Really scrape the air with your heels. Nice, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Give your knees a little squeeze. Set up for abdominal twists. Fingertips behind your skull, elbows out really, really wide, opposite elbow to opposite knee, your pace. Active feet, flex them, press them. Keep the elbows wide so the obliques are what's creating the twist here and allowing the elbow to get close to the knee. Yeah, don't cheat yourself. Stay for five, four, three, two, one. Hug your knees, big sigh, rock back and forth a few times. And we'll roll all the way up to bridge pose. Or not bridge pose, boat pose. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, feet up in the air or down on the floor, your choice. We're gonna row our boat. So bring your hands into heart center and we'll pause on each side. So 10 and pause. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Really squeeze the obliques. Three, two, and one. Hug your knees. Make your way to right side half pigeon on your belly or on your back. Keep your breath moving even here through the transition. A mindful way to stay anchored in what's happening right now. 
and what you're doing right now. So flex your right foot. And switch sides. Left side, you can move through a down dog or swing your leg around to get there. Flex your left foot to keep your knee nice and straight. Nice, and then you're here in the stillness, reignite your breath. Drop any work that's happening in your shoulders. Seated single leg extension. Bring your right leg all the way around. Left foot comes in like tree pose. Sit up on your sit bones. Reach for the ceiling and fold forward. Center of your chest towards your toes. Release your toes. We'll take gates pose. So here your left hand comes behind, plant it into the floor, and lift your hips as you reach toward the back of your mat. Big breath to lengthen. And then replace your hips to the floor. Left side seated single leg extension. Toes to the ceiling. Inhale, rise. Exhale, chest towards your toes. Little or big bend in that knee. Release your toes, gates pose. This time take the opposite hand behind, press it into the floor, lift up, press your chest forward, and replace both hips to the mat. Seated forward fold, legs together in front or out wide, your choice. Even bigger bend in the knees right here. And then adjust your pelvis. Feel yourself sitting on the front side of your sit bones so that your lumbar spine can feel long and spacious. Release your feet, tabletop or reverse plank. Soles of the feet on the floor. Lift your hips all the way up toward the ceiling, the center of your chest toward the ceiling. Big breath in, lower all the way down. Let's get upside down. If you've got a headstand or handstand practice, take that on. Shoulder stands or waterfalls, a great place to go right here. My favorite right now has been the waterfall with the block underneath for a little bit of support. Now, if you're placing that block underneath of you, you want it right at your sacrum. So where that bony plate is at the bottom of your low back, that's where you want to place it. You now stack your heels directly over your hips. Press up into your feet. Pull the leg muscles to the bones. Turn the inner ankles back and hug your outer shins in. Yeah, that creates a little bit of shaking, just a little bit of work here to invigorate the muscles, really get the circulation moving. Shoulder stands and waterfalls can move to plow. Full inversions, take a few more breaths and then make your way down to a child's pose. Plows can move to deaf yogi, bring your knees down around your ears.
and then roll all the way out onto your mat. Hug your knees into center and drop them over to your right for a supine twist. Going to bring around some cold eye towels. Jeffrey, David, and our friends at home, I invite you to dim your lights if you'd like. If you have an eye towel prepared for yourself, partake in that. And bring the knees back to center over to the left. Breathe in and expand through the side of your body. Back to center, Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of your feet together, knees wide. Use this pose right here to set up your Shavasana. So hug your shoulders underneath of you. Get your whole shoulder girdle as flat on the floor as you can make it. You know, sometimes a little tuck of the pelvis here is nice as well. So if you're feeling any warmth or tension in your lumbar spine, you can lift your hips an inch off the floor, send your tailbone down towards your heels, and then replace them. Shavasana, take your legs out long and wide and your arms out long and wide. Allow your to return to its natural pace here. So we're observing the breath, but doing nothing to change it, simply noticing what's there without complicating things. I'll share today's journey to the heart passage titled, Don't Complicate Things. The simple, clear answer for life situations can be easily found in the heart. Don't limit its wisdom to just one or two areas. Let it guide you through all of your life. Are you struggling with finances, feeling overwhelmed by taxes, not certain to do to help what to do to help somebody that you love, a problem with a friend or a relationship that's gotten sticky? All of these areas and more can be brought to your heart. Calm your mind. Let go. Get quiet. You don't have to know the plan. Just put out the question and then listen to your inner voice. It will guide you through any maze that you've been lost in. Don't try to complicate things by trying to have it all figured out. The answers are simple if you simply look in your heart to find them.
begin to deepen your breath. Bring some movement back to the body, wiggle your fingers and your toes, your wrists and ankles. Move your knees and your elbows. And make your way toward a full body stretch, fingertips overhead, toes extended. And hug it all into center. Squeeze your knees into your chest and rock over to your right side for infant's pose. Let your forehead rest on the floor, on your eye towel, on your arm or on your mat. Send your body gratitude for doing the hard work. Send the other yogis in the room and at home gratitude for showing up to do the work with you. And send a little bit of gratitude here to the person or the thing that started your yoga practice. What inspired you to come here the first time? Press your left hand into the floor to rise to a comfortable seat, eyes closed or drishti settled in front of your nose. On an inhale, reach to the ceiling, fingers overhead, extend both arms fully, hands to heart center. We'll end as we began with three ohms together. Pull your thumbs into your chest to feel the vibration. And breathe with me, breath in. Uh -oh. Knuckles rise to third eye center. We bow and acknowledge each other. Thank you, each of you, for showing up, doing the work, and doing it authentically so the rest of us could do the same. Namaste. Great practice, yogis. Guess we did enough sun salutations. The sun is now here. Questions, comments, feedback about anything we went over in class today or things that are coming up in the studio, get at me after class. Jeffrey, David, everyone at home, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.